Hey guys, it's Kisera and today I'm going to be doing my September reading wrap up. So I'm filming this video a lot later than I normally do because it's been one of those weeks and it's gonna be a long one because I read 28 books in the month of September. As always, we're gonna start with my reading stats. So of those 28 books, I read two contemporary books, eight fantasy books, 12 sci-fi books. So I read more sci-fi books than fantasy books, which was kind of my goal for September because I was participating in the Tome Infinity and Beyond Readathon, which is a sci-fi readathon. So I really wanted to try and read more sci-fi than fantasy, which which I actually did manage to do. I read one historical fiction, two thrillers, and three classics. As for star rating, I had an average star rating of four stars, which is a bit lower than normal. I only had five five star books, seven four and a half star books, seven four star books, three three and a half star books, four three star books, and two two and a half star books. Makes me sad, but it is what it is. For age range, I read 16 adult books, nine young adult books, one middle grade book, one children's book, and one miscellaneous. So for page count, I'll put a little chart on the screen for you guys, but my average page count was 392 pages, which is a little bit lower than normal because I typically read a little bit over the 400 page count for my average page count, but that's generally because of fantasy and I didn't read as much fantasy this month and I read a little bit more sci-fi, which those are generally a little bit shorter. So that makes perfect sense also. So for my physical to audio ratio, I ended up reading eight physical books, five eBooks, which is crazy, like, cause I never read eBooks and I read five this month and 15 audiobooks. So I'm still pretty heavy on the audiobooks, but Overall, I'm really happy with all of my stats for the month. So for my book buying brand challenge, I completed two books. I read The Art of War by Sun Tzu and I DNF'd The Tiger's Daughter by K. Arsenal Rivera. So we'll just go straight into my DNFs this month because this is my only DNF for the month. And oh, this book, I had such high hopes for. Like this was gonna be the book at the end that I really loved because it's an Asian inspired fantasy, but I just did not like the way that it was written. I did not enjoy the second person point of view and I couldn't get past that. Like I just really didn't like the way it was written and I don't mind second person point of view generally. I just don't like the way it was done here. So I ended up DNFing this one at about 30% into the book because I just, I was over it. I didn't like the characters. I didn't care for the writing. The plot was just too slow for me to really get into it. There were some interesting things happening with the plot, but with all the other things about this book that I just wasn't enjoying, I couldn't care about the plot as much as I wanted to. So that actually completed my book buying ban challenge. So I finished the challenge and I can buy books again, but I also have to go back to my previous challenge that I had, which was my unwrapped book challenge. So for the last two weeks in September, I started unwrapping books again. These are the two books that I unwrapped in September. The first book is Death Swarm by Leah Cypress. I actually really enjoyed this book while I was reading it, but I kind of forgot that I read it because it's incredibly forgettable. It's kind of your run-of-the-mill YA fantasy that has an overbearing romantic subplot. It was interesting and it was good for the time that I was reading it because I was reading a lot of really hard sci-fi at the time and it was just a really good break from all of that. But overall, like, I don't remember anything about this book. Like, I really don't. I ended up giving this one three stars. I probably will not be continuing on with the series just because I'll probably have to reread the first one to continue on. And there's just so many other books that I want to read right now. So it was good, but like ultimately forgettable. The other book that I ended up unwrapping is The Lovely Bones by Alice Bold. This book starts out so strong. Like it has such a strong start because it's about a girl who is murdered and it's told from her perspective from the afterlife. And it's kind of like her family and the police and all of that figuring out what happened to her. But like after the strong start and we see what happened to her, it gets really boring, like really, really boring. And there's a, like a good part at the end. There's like one scene at the end that I do think like it's worth getting to that scene. But the rest of the book, I was just very bored. I didn't really care for the mystery at all just because we already knew what happened. Like it, it wasn't exciting to me. I didn't think the thriller aspects were to it were very exciting. And then just like the contemporary regular fiction aspects to it, I thought were incredibly boring. So it has an interesting concept, 
but ultimately it fell kind of flat to me. So I ended up giving this one three stars also. So now we're gonna get into all of the other books that I chose to read this month. I'm gonna start with my lowest rated book and work my way up to my highest rated book. So I wanna start this out with Sitting in the Middle of the Night by Charlie Jean Anders. I ended up giving this book two and a half stars. I really loved the concept of this book because it's about a civilization that's set on a tidally locked planet. So a tidally locked planet, one side of the planet always faces towards the sun, one side always faces away from the sun. So one side's always always day and it's extremely hot and you can't live there. One side's always night and it's extremely cold. You really can't live there either. But you can kind of live in like that twilight area of the planet. And I've always wanted to see that done in a book. So this book has just such an amazing world concept. I expected the world to be so well done and interesting and this world was still boring. It was the most boring way to do a tidally like planet world that I can think of. Like there was one world building aspect to this book that I can think of, one single world building aspect. And the rest of this book was just incredibly character focused which generally I don't mind character focused books. I actually really like character focused books. I happen to not like any of the characters in this book so it ended up falling really flat for me and it just wasn't what I was expecting it to be based on the description of the book. So I ended up giving it two and a half stars. It's still really well written. It still is interesting. Like I made it all the way through the book so like I enjoyed the book but it just it didn't do anything that I wanted it to do. The next book I'm going to talk about is The Unkindest Tide by Shawna McGuire. I actually did a full review from this book, so I'll link it up there in the cards for you guys if you want to check it out. I won't spend too much time on this. I ended up getting an e-arc of this book from Nat Galley. It's a 13th novel in an urban fantasy series, and I was really interested in reading some of Shawna McGuire's like, other works because I'd only ever read the Wayward Children series by her, which I actually really, really like. So I wanted to see just like, if I would like any of her other works and I'm like really sad that I picked up this one because I just really didn't like the writing in it. It's so different from the way she writes in some of her other books. Like the dialogue I think for me was like the worst part of it because they were spent a lot of time trying to be funny and witty and I just didn't feel any of it. Like it wasn't funny, it wasn't interesting and I just felt like the plot and the character building just wasn't good enough for like the amount of pages that it had and I just didn't end up liking it very much. I did feel invested in some of like the character relationships because they had some interesting relationships, but that's literally all that I cared about in this book. So yeah, I ended up giving that one two and a half stars also. So the next book I'd like to talk about is Lagoon by Nadia Korafor. So I read this book for the Tome Infinity and Beyond Readathon. It was my book from Africa. Nadia Korafor is an author that I really want to read more of because I read the Binti trilogy earlier this year and I really enjoyed it. And I did enjoy this book as well. I had a little bit of trouble reading it. It was very much a slow read for me. I really love the atmosphere of this book. I love the writing in this book. It was really, really well done. So this book is set in Nigeria. It takes place during an alien invasion, basically. The setting of this book I felt like was really, really interesting. I didn't end up liking most of the characters and I didn't like that it had a lot of characters just for like a small amount of time. There were like three characters that we followed for the whole book, but then there were other characters that were just in there for like a couple of chapters or so. And this is like a pretty small book to be switching characters that much. So I never really got attached to like any of the characters. The plot fell a little flat for me. Like it was interesting, but it fell just a little flat for me. I did end up enjoying it though, so I ended up giving it three stars. The next book that I like to talk about is Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. This book is about a girl named Elizabeth who was an orphan and grew up in a library. And the library is this magical library where the books can like talk and they have personalities and things like that. And she basically sees her world turned upside down. This tragedy happens and that's when she's like kind of pulled into the action of the plot. I was very hot and cold with this book because there were times where I was like intensely focused and really into the story. And then there were other times where I was just like frustrated by the way things were happening in the story. I did really enjoy the characters. I did enjoy the world building. I didn't like the atmosphere of the book, if that makes sense. Because there were times where the atmosphere was like kind of spooky-ish 
and then it would just be cut by humor and I did not like the humor in this book also. The humor really annoyed me, especially the dialogue. Again, I hate it when they try to be funny in dialogue and then it's not. Like if it's actually funny, I'll go for it, but I didn't find this one very funny. I did really like the books and sometimes the books would be funny, which I liked. I just felt like there were times where this book was trying to be intense, but then it would just cut it with sarcasm and I didn't enjoy that. And then there were also parts of the plot that were kind of weird too, that I just felt like didn't make sense and didn't work for me. So like, I was really into this story sometimes. So like, I really enjoyed it while I was reading it, but I also really was frustrated by this book. So I ended up giving it three stars. So the next book I wanna talk about is The Amber Spyglass by Philip Pullman. This is the third book in the His Dark Materials trilogy. I actually really, really liked the His Dark Materials trilogy. I didn't enjoy the Amber Spike Glass as much as I wanted to. I just didn't feel very much while I was reading it. There were quite a few different subplots that were very separate at the beginning. And I kind of liked all of the subplots, but I didn't like them together, if that makes sense. I would have liked it if they were separate books, but in being in the same book, it didn't really work for me. But I did like how they ended up coming together and I did enjoy the book overall at the end. So I ended up giving it three and a half stars. So the next book I wanna talk about is The Fate of the Tearling by Erica Johansson. This is the third book in the Queen of the Tearling series. I just felt like this series, it started out really strong. I really loved Queen of the Tearling. Invasion of the Tearling was a little weaker in my opinion than Queen of the Tearling was. And then Fate of the Tearling was probably my least favorite of the three. I did enjoy reading this book while I was reading it. I liked being back in this world. I liked the characters. I didn't like the secondary plot lines because there are secondary plot lines in this book that don't follow our main characters. And then I didn't like the way that it ended. The ending kind of ruined the book for me because one of the real reasons why I like this book is because how down to earth the political and social situations are in this book. It almost felt like an easy way out to me, if you know what I mean. So that's why I ended up giving it three and a half stars. So the next book I wanna talk about is Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. So Mira Grant is actually the same author as Sean McGuire, it's just a different pen name. And Into the Drowning Deep, I decided to read at the end of September going into October because it's kind of like sci-fi horror. So I felt like it was just like a good bridge between the two months. And it's about basically killer mermaids, which I was super excited going into it. I actually really liked the way it started out because there's a lot of different characters involved in this book. And I really liked like the way the characters were introduced and just like kind of that atmosphere at the beginning of the book. It kind of had like this creepy sort of atmosphere at the beginning. And there's also some really great death representation in this book. And I really liked the way the death representation was used in a plot. I think it was done in a very interesting and creative way. And I really liked that. The ending of this book fell a little flat to me. There's tons of great action in the ending of this book but I just didn't like the way that it was written because I felt like a lot of the action happened through internal monologue. So like we heard what the characters were thinking rather than what they were actually feeling. And a lot of times they were thinking like of their backstory. So it just kind of like took me out of the action. But overall, I did really, really enjoy this book and I gave it 3.5 stars. The next book that I wanna talk about is A Fool's Circle by Susan Seddon. So the author contacted me on Instagram and asked me to review her book and it seemed like an interesting concept so I decided to review it. And this is a psychological thriller following a character who is in an abusive relationship and she comes into an inheritance. So she has a lot of money and she's gonna leave her husband and then just like a ton of stuff happens. I really enjoyed this book a lot more than I was expecting to. Like the beginning of the book starts out a little slow, but then there are so many twists and turns, like so, so many twists and turns. And I ended up really, really enjoying it at the end. There were quite a few characters that I didn't like as much as I wanted to. Like I felt like there's a way that I could have liked those characters and I didn't end up liking them as much as I wanted to, but I really, really loved the way that the plot was written. And I felt like, like all of the clues led up perfectly towards the ending and I loved that aspect of it. So I ended up giving it four stars. I also did a full review for this one, so I'll link that up in the cards for you guys. And I did read one nonfiction this month. That's The Art of War by Sun Tzu. I really enjoyed this book. There's really not that much to say about it. It's super short and it's definitely very poignant and interesting. And it's definitely a book that I'll be thinking about and probably will reread in the future just to like absorb it better. But I enjoyed it and I ended up giving it four stars. So the next book I wanna talk about is Challenger Deep by Neil Schusterman. So I 
completely forgot when I was doing my unwrapped book. So this is actually my first unwrapped book in the month of September. I actually ended up really, really enjoying this book. This is about a boy who has schizophrenia and he has these delusions that he is on a ship bound for the Mariana Trench. And I just really love the way that it was done between like reality and his delusions and kind of like how we went in between those two. It definitely dives really deep into the human mind and it was done in an interesting way and I really enjoyed it. So I ended up giving it four stars. The next book that I want to talk about is Pilgrim. Pilgrimage of Swords by Anthony Ryan. So this is a book that I got on NetGalley also. I decided to choose this book because Anthony Ryan is an author that I really wanted to try and it's a novella so I figured that it was a good way to like just test out his writing, see if I really liked it. I did really enjoy it. It's about a main character named Pilgrim who is going on a pilgrimage to pray to a mad god, which is just a really interesting concept and I really like the way that it was done. And I did a full review on that one. So I will link that one up in the cards for you guys. And I ended up giving that one four stars. The next book that I wanna talk about is Origin by Jessica Corey. So this book is set in the Amazon rainforest and it's about a girl named Pia who is part of a scientific experiment to create the perfect human, basically. She is the result of that experiment. She's the perfect human. She can't be hurt. She can't ever die. And she's been raised by a group of scientists. It's kind of like a coming of age story, but there's kind of mysteries involved there as well, and a little bit of romance and different things. And I ended up really enjoying this book a lot more than I was expecting to. I read this for the Tome Infinity and Beyond Readathon. It was my book for South America, and I'm really happy that I ended up picking this one up because it's definitely a really well-built YA sci-fi book, and I really enjoyed it and gave it four stars. So the next book I wanna talk about is Illuminae by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. This book I also read for the Tome Infinity and Beyond Readathon. It was my book from Australia and I ended up really enjoying this book. Like I wasn't expecting to like this book going into it, but I ended up really enjoying this book. I really like the format of this book because it's like the mixed media format and there are two main characters who are kind of talking to each other from different ships. It's set in space by the way, which I love books that are set in space, like just such a great concept and I love like how different these two characters are but at the same time I like how the same they are also. I really like where the book ended also and I'm definitely excited to continue on with the next book in the series. So I ended up giving this book four stars as well. So the next book I'm going to talk about is The First 15 Lives of Harry August by Claire North. I really enjoy this book. So it's about a character named Harry August who relives his life over and over again. So when he's born, he lives his whole life, he dies, and then he's reborn in back into the same body at the same time, but with all of his memories of the previous life. I really, really love all the kind of like concepts and theories that this book explores. I also really like the world building in here because there's a very interesting society in this world and there were just so many really interesting concepts done in this world that I really ended up enjoying and I ended up giving this book four stars. So the next book I want to talk about is Realm of Nights by Jennifer Ann Davis. So this is another book that I got on NetGalley and I did a full review for this one so I'll link that up in the cards if you guys want to check that out. It's a YA fantasy. It's a romance fueled YA fantasy. I enjoyed this book way more than I should have. I honestly don't know what it was about this book. I was just super into it. I loved the main character. I liked the world. I thought it was a very interesting world and I thought it was an interesting political situation. I liked the growth that the main character had and like kind of the things that she was like working through in her mind at the time. I'm really excited to see where this series goes. So definitely really enjoyed it and I ended up giving it four and a half stars. The next book that I'd like to talk about is A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Tolls. So this book is set in the Soviet Union right after the Bolshevik Revolution and it's following a main character who is under house arrest in a hotel. This book was very different for me. I do read a lot of historical fiction but I feel like the historical fiction I read are either like World War II historical fiction or like very American historical fiction. But like this one, while it's an American author, it's set in Russia. So it's very different in that concept. And it just gives us a very interesting picture of what was going on at the time and all of the turmoil. And I loved the characters. They were fantastic. And I really, really love the writing in this book. The writing really is what made this book for me. And I listened to the audiobook. The audiobook's really well done also. I ended up really, really enjoying it. It was very different for me, but like 
it's good to step out of your comfort zone sometimes and read something like that you would never pick up and I did end up really enjoying it and I gave it 4.5 stars. So next I would like to talk about 10,000 Skies Above You and A Million Worlds With You by Claudia Gray. So these are the second and third books in the Firebird trilogy. So this series explores the multiple worlds theory. It's basically the theory that for every choice that you make there is another world in which you've made that choice and in this book there is this device called the Firebird that is technology that was created it allows your consciousness to travel to another one of your own bodies in one of these other worlds which is just like an interesting twist on this concept. I really like this concept. It's very interesting. It's one of my favorite physics theories and I love seeing it done in fiction. I felt like this was just a really great YA series that I really ended up enjoying. I love the way mysteries are written in this book. I love the action, especially in A Million Worlds With You. There is so much good action. Really, really like the characters also. So I ended up giving both of these four and a half stars. So the next book I want to talk about is At the Mountains of Madness by H.P. Lovecraft. I read this book for the Tome Infinity and Beyond Readathon also, and this book was my book that was set in Antarctica. I ended up really enjoying this book more than I expected to, because from the beginning of this book, I was a little iffy about it because I didn't really like the tone of it. I didn't really care for any of the characters, but like the ending of this book is just, mm, it's so good. I love the writing. H.P. Lovecraft's writing, I don't know what it is about it. Like, it's dry, it, like, it feels like nonfiction sometimes, but his imagery is so descriptive. Let's put it that way. It's extremely descriptive. It's so easy to picture what he's trying to convey and like, mm, like gives you tingles and it was so good and I ended up really, really enjoying it way more than I was expecting to because it's a really short audiobook and it was fantastic. <laughs> So I ended up giving it four and a half stars. The next book that I want to talk about is The Three Body Problem by Six and Lou. I read this for the Tome of Infinity and Beyond Reading Fun. Also, this is my book from Asia. And this is a very interesting book also. I really, really liked the way this book was structured because it has like an interesting mystery at the beginning. And then it's structured between the real world and then, then this, there's this video game in which they are trying to figure out the three body problem. And the video game is really interesting because the world in the video game is very interesting than like how the video game ends up tying to the real world and things like that. I love the way that it was done. It was so, so well done. And I really, really enjoyed it. I cannot wait to move on to the next book in this series. So I ended up giving this one four and a half stars. The next book I wanna talk about is Sword of Destiny by Andrzej Sapkowski. This is the second like series of short stories in the Witcher series. I really, really enjoyed this. Like this one was so much better for me than the first group of short stories. And I actually really did like the first group of short stories also. I really liked like the character development that we're getting here and like some of the character relationships are really interesting. I love the world and I'm definitely super excited to move on to the novels, like super excited for it. And I really, really enjoyed it and I ended up giving it four and a half stars. So the next book I want to talk about is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. On a complete whim, I decided to listen to the audiobook for this one, narrated by Jim Dale, which is like one of my favorite audiobook narrators, which is why I decided to pick it up. I think this is actually a reread because I've read it before, like for college class. I really, really enjoyed it. Like I love the whimsical writing. I really love Jim Dale's narration of it. I really like Alice as a character and it was just really interesting. And I'm excited to read through The Looking Glass because I remember what Alice in Wonderland is actually about. I don't remember what Through the Looking Glass is about. So I'm definitely excited to read that one. And it was definitely like a really good classic that I really, really liked. So I ended up giving that one five stars. So the next book that I wanna talk about is The Ember Blade by Chris Whitting. So this is a high fantasy novel following two main characters named Cade and Aaron. They live in the country of Ossia and their country has been overtaken by the Crowden. Everything that was their culture and all of that is basically considered lesser and they're supposed to be taking on like the Crowden culture and things like that. And there's kind of this Ossian rebellion going on also, but they're not really part of it. It's a very well-built like classic quest fantasy novel, it has some really interesting character development and I really, really loved the ending. Like the ending, mm, 
so good and I really enjoyed it so I ended up giving it five stars. The next book that I want to talk about is Recursion by Blake Crouch. I went into this book with pretty high expectations. I think last month or maybe the month before I read Dark Matter by Blake Crouch which I ended up loving like really really loving. Recursion is no different. I love Recursion. Like it started out a little annoying to me like when it first started out I had problems with the science about like a third of the way through it like where the action really started started it was just like mm, perfect for me mind you this book is about time travel I think everyone knows that this book is about time travel which is like one of my favorite tropes ever I love books that are about time travel and I just I love the way it was done in this book I really really love the way that it was done and while I didn't like the first like third of this book the last two thirds of this book were so so good and it was just like it felt like this book was like made for me at least like the last two thirds i love the action in it i love the way the action was done i love the way the characters are related to each other and things like that and mm, i just really enjoyed it and i gave it five stars the next book that i want to talk about is the end of eternity by isaac asimov this is the first book that i read by asimov and oh my gosh it is so good like i want to read all of his books now because uh, it's so interesting it's set in this place outside of space and time which is called eternity and they can like travel to different times and like change like little things or take people out of there and they're like technicians and these technicians are people who wouldn't have changed the timeline very much it's so interesting there's a great like mystery thriller element to it that i really enjoyed and i like the way that turned out and just like implications this group has on the entire world are just huge and I love that about it. I'm really excited to read more books by Asimov. If you have any recommendations please let me know down in the comments because I definitely want to read more by him and I ended up giving The End of Eternity five stars. The last book that I want to talk about is Assassin's Fate by Robin Hobb. This is the last book in the realm of the Elderlings and I finished it at like the very beginning of September so it's been a while since I've read this book but it is by far my favorite book in the entire series. Like the series is huge, it's 16 novels and there are some amazing books in it, but this is definitely my favorite of all of them. I feel like this is the most like grim dark of all of them. I recently, before I read this book, I had seen The Realm of the Elderlings on this list of best grim dark fantasy series and I'm like they're only oh it's not really grimdark and then I read this book and I was like oh yep it's grimdark like there's so many great aspects of this book and I just love love the way that it was done and I liked how all of like the open threads throughout all of the different series got like their closure in this book and it was just so well done and I really really loved it so of course I ended up giving this one five stars so that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you've read any of these books, let me know down in the comments. I would love to discuss it with you guys. I post frequently on this channel, so consider subscribing. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up to support my channel. All social media links are in the description down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.